Hello, I'm Reverend Dr. Israel Chris Lerry, the Senior Pastor of Shepherd Baptist Church, Obani Koro, Lagos, Nigeria, the CEO of Oasis of Faith Intercontinental Limited. That is a private Christian pilgrimage company and the president of Christian Tourism Practitioners Association of Nigeria, CTPAN. That is the umbrella body for all private pilgrimage operators in Nigeria. I want you to spare me just a few minutes to watch this video. If you are a traveler who carries a Nigerian passport, or if you have someone close to you who travels with a Nigerian passport, I had a very traumatic experience at Cairo International Airport recently on April 30, 2024, and I need to share this with you. I left Lagos for Amman through Egypt Airlines with a group of 28 pilgrims, and we had a stopover for four hours in Cairo before we boarded the second leg from Cairo to Amman. I took all my pilgrims to our connecting gate, H2 around 9 p.m. And having said to 26 of them there, myself and another woman who are on the trip, who are flying business class, left for the business class lounge. We were in that lounge until one hour before our next flight. When I told her to let us go back to the gate, since I saw the notification that the gate of our connecting flight was open. When we arrived, I saw the pilgrim seated and not going through the gate security checks i asked them why and they replied that they tried to but were asked to go back and sit down and allow others to go through the check first i then went to the counter and asked a young man i saw there if they were not attending to a man passengers yet and he confirmed that they were already doing that so i told all the premiums to rise up and let us go through the gate formalities to board our next flight. As we lined up to go through the formalities, I saw some policemen and some airport staff discussing, talking together. I wonder what they were talking about. And initially, I thought it was about our documentation or visas that they wanted to confirm. After a little time, I was told to step aside and allow others to go through the security check. At that time, I knew we could do our own security check easily. That's, that means myself and the other woman. So I told her to wait for me while others can go through their security check. Some policemen then asked me to follow them to their office. At this time, I still assumed it had to do with our documentation. So I brought all the documents relating to our trip and asked the woman to wait until I returned to the gate. They then took me to the office of the head of the police of the airport. And three police officers enter with me while about 12 others were outside looking at us through the door, which was left open. Then the police officer, I mean, the chief police officer asked me if I knew what offense I had committed. I wondered what the offense was and replied I had not committed any offense. Then they brought a man in as an interpreter who told me in English language that a lady had just accused me of sexual assault and the punishment was jail and I should be ready to go to jail. My first comments were, who, where, when, and how? Then they pointed to a lady who decided to hide her face behind another lady. When I tried to look at her direction, I told the interpreter, I had never seen the lady talk less of talking with her. The police chief then said, in our country, we believe the word of any woman as true. And that means with or without evidence, you are guilty. He then said there was a video evidence. When I heard that there was a video evidence, I was relieved. And I requested for the video evidence. He later said there was no need for video evidence because it will make me miss my flight unless I agreed to their offered solution. I made it clear that if they had any video evidence, they would not find me there. For I'd been at the business class lounge for three hours, and I had an alibi among my pilgrims who was there with me in the lounge. Till we left for the gate. Then they said there was a witness. And immediately, a young man came forward who stated that he was a witness to the assault. I asked him where and when, but there was no answer. The police chief then said that since there was a witness, I could only go if I accepted the solution it would offer. I asked what was the solution. 
He then said, I must apologize to the lady in a way that she will accept. I then asked, how do I apologize for what I had not done? He insisted that if I did not apologize, I shall be charged to court. I then tried to look in the direction of the lady who was still hiding her face behind another lady and said, lady, I have never met you. I have no idea of what you are talking about, but possibly someone else has attacked you and you mistook me for the person. Nevertheless, sorry to you if you're offended. Anyway, but let it be known that I have no idea of what you are saying. The police chief then turned to a man who was said to be her boss if my apology was accepted and he said it was okay. The police chief then said I should follow him to another office and leave my aunt luggage behind. I objected to that idea by saying I cannot leave my bag behind because the rule of every airport is that passengers must always be with their luggage. I cannot leave my luggage behind. And at this time, I began to discern that they were up to something. They were trying to look for every means to set me up. When we got to the other office, I was asked to wait outside. When the police chief and other officers entered, at this time, I told myself that if these people succeeded, there was no way to free myself. I was totally isolated from my pilgrims who were supposed to be boarding the next flight. And I could not understand their conversation which you were making in Arabic. I then picked up my phone, pressed the record button and kept the phone back in my pocket. At least that will be my only evidence in the future. After a while, I was invited into the office and I was asked to come and sign a document they had prepared in Arabic. I refused to sign because I told them I did not know what they had written. That would be stupid of me as an educated person. They said if I did not sign, I will go to jail. They said it does not matter that what they actually wrote was just a settlement. And I still said no. To the glory of God, I have spent over 25 years of my life studying up to PhD level. I cannot sign what I do not know. The police chief then got angry and shouted me down and said, you will miss your flight and I will detain you and charge you to court. The following morning, I then said to him, if God says I will go to jail for an offense I did not commit, so be it. But I will not sign unless I know what was written. Then the so-called interpreter offered to read the content to my hearing. And I told him I could not trust his reading. I insisted. I could only sign if they could rewrite it in English. When they began to pressure me, I took the biro and wrote below the Arabic write-up. I do not know. I plan to write below. I do not know what was written above, but I am compelled to sign this document. Therefore, I am not aware of the contents above. But when they saw me writing, I do not in English one of the officers snatched the barrel from me and shouted me down. The police chief then insisted, if I did not sign, I will miss my flight. We should have taken off and they would detain me and charge me to court the following morning. Then an idea came to my mind. Since I succeeded in writing, I do not below the Arabic. It speaks volume. So I picked the barrel again and wrote my surname. While doing that, the desk manager of the check-in counter came in and talked to them in Arabic like magic. They handed over my passport to me and asked me and asked him to take me to the aircraft. I did not understand the magic words that affected my release until I got to the tarmac. Right at the foot of the aircraft, I saw all my 27 pilgrims. Standing at the entrance of the aircraft, they had refused to board the plane unless their leader was released. Against all pleas and threats, even from the pilot, who told them he would take off without them, they refused to enter the aircraft unless their leader was released. Now I know that was my saving grace. The refusal of 27 persons who had already checked in to enter 
The plane frustrated their plots. That was the report the Dex manager brought to the syndicate at their airport. They would have succeeded if they were traveling alone. I wondered what they would have achieved if there were no people that I was traveling with. They would have succeeded in making me miss my flight. And it taught me I am still traumatized by that event. Wondering what would have happened. What else would have happened if there were no other passengers with me? No doubt this could have happened to many other persons who would have been charged to court for wrong accusations or headed of being extorted by this syndicate in that airport. I decided to make this video to expose the evil plots going on in many African airports against Nigerians. Kindly share this video with all your friends and your brothers so that they can know what goes on. We need to be more careful with these people. Please do your best to make it go viral. You might be saving another person from such embarrassment by exposing the evil schemes in some of these airports. May God save us from evil men. Amen and amen.